الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبي محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونزلنا عليك الكتابة بيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين صدق الله العظيم We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers And in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam And we greet you all, brothers and sisters, with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Our topic, Timelines of Events in Akhir Zaman. And we can go either to the Quran or to the Hadith. There are many timelines in the Hadith, but very few people <laughs> go to the Quran for timelines of events. So tonight, I offer you Timelines of events in Akhir Zaman from the Quran. But before we do that, I have to warn you about GPS. GPS told me 20 minutes. It took about an hour and 20 minutes. So be careful with GPS. <laughs> The Qur'an is comprised of two kinds of verses. First of all, this lecture is not going to go onto the internet. Now, please do not put it on the internet. Why? Because the voice is not going to be good. You have to record directly for the... Yeah, people are going to complain all over the world. They complain, complain. So please do not put this lecture on the internet. The Qur'an is comprised of two kinds of verses. Ayat Muhkamat and Ayat Mutashabihat. Muhkamat are those verses which are plain and clear. No two ways about it. All that you need is tafsir. But Mutashabihat are different. You cannot understand mutashabihat literally no you have to interpret mutashabihat and uh, only Allah can confirm that interpretation is correct and so the first question we ask is why why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his wisdom, why has he put one part of the Qur'an which cannot be understood without being interpreted? And no one can interpret it and be confident that you are correct. Because only Allah can confirm. And the answer is, it is Allah's wisdom at work. That in Akhiru Zaman, He wants to test you. He wants you to think. And so, on all subjects pertaining to Akhir Zaman or the end time. Much of the information is located in the Mutashabihat. And if you do not think, you pay the price. Number two, 
that Allah will choose to send the knowledge to his servants when he chooses. And so there may be verses of the Quran which as yet we still cannot interpret. You have to wait. And when a servant of Allah attempts to interpret the Quran, and of course he says, Allah knows best, it is now a test for you. Is this the truth or not? And so we are being tested by Allah in Akhiruzam. There is new knowledge coming from Allah constantly for understanding the Mutashabiha. And whosoever interprets the Quran correctly will be confident that it is truth and truth will survive. And if he makes a mistake, it will be forgotten. We go down the river. So there is confidence now when you interpret the Quran that if your interpretation is correct, they can do what they want. They can close the doors of the masjid to you if your interpretation is correct. It will survive. Having said that, we now turn to timelines of events in the Quran of Akhiru Zaman. And we begin with the hadith that Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu was was passing by and he saw his companion sitting talking. What are you talking about? And they said, we're talking about Alamatussah, the signs of the last day. And he said, the last day would not come. And he mentioned ten signs, and you all know them already because I repeated them a hundred thousand times. They have not been given to us in the order in which they will occur. Number one, the Jal. Number two, yeah, Jews and Ma Jews, Gog and Magog. Number three, the return of the true Messiah, Nabi Isa Islam. Number four, Dukhan, the smoke. Number five, the bottle up. Number six, that the sun would rise from the west. Number seven, eight, and nine, three, earthquakes. The earth sinks down and swallows what it swallows. One in the east, one in the west, and one in Arabia. Although you did have one in Taman Sri Yuki a few Ramadans ago. And number ten, that a fire will come out of Yemen and drive people to the place of assembly, assembly. Of these ten, the Quran mentions one as the sign of all signs. وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَمٌ لِسَعَى Surely he, meaning Nabi Isa Islam, meaning his return, is the sign of all signs of Akhiruzaman. But the punctuation did not come with Jibra'il alayhi salam. And so instead of وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَمٌ لِلسَّعَادَةِ He is the sign of all signs. When you look at the punctuation now, you see وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِلسَّعَادَةِ that he is the knowledge of the hour, but this is in conflict with the rest of the Quran. Because the knowledge of the hour is not with him, it's only with Allah. Even the Injil, the Gospel says that. <laughs> Every Christian must believe 
that only the Father knows that or the Son does not know. That is in the Bible. <laughs> only the Father knows, the Son doesn't know. So this is a wrong punctuation. The correct one is, وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَمٌ بِالسَّعَةِ He is the sign of the hour. And so, in the timeline of events, you will expect that the return of Nabi Isa is the supremely important event. And now we turn to the Quran. And there will be several verses of the Quran that we will quote for you. And we have to bring them together harmoniously into a whole. We'll do part of it before Salatul Isha. We will stop for Salatul Isha. And then the second part of the lecture will be after Salatul Isha. So let us begin with Allah's blessed nickname. Who knows? One of those sitting here today, tomorrow, will be the scholar of Islam, Barak Silas. Who knows? Then the Isa al-Islam is to be crucified. They wanted him crucified. And he did not know what's going to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him at that moment. And that conversation is in the Quran. One of the most dramatic things in the Quran is the conversation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with Nabi Isa when they wanted to crucify him. And Allah said, Ya Isa, oh Jesus, first person, in me whatever faith, I'm going to take your soul. In me whatever faith, I'm going to take your soul. So when I take your soul, they'll believe you're dead. <laughs> Everybody will believe you are dead. But Allah says in the Quran that when He takes the soul, there are two things He can do. Not three, two. He can either keep the soul, in which case you're dead, or He can return the soul. This is Surah to Zuman. So you know what happened then. He took the soul. In the Mutawafi, Warafiyoka Ilayi. And I'm going to raise you unto myself. So they thought he was dead. If you were there, you would also think he was dead. But 600 years later, the Quran came down to say, no, they did not kill him. No, they did not crucify him. What I think should be alone, I made it appear to them like that. So Allah raised him unto himself. So he's not in Jannah. No, no, no. وَرَافِيُكَ إِلَيَّ And Allah raised him unto himself. So we have to say that he is with Allah. We can't say anything else. وَمُطَحِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And I'm going to cleanse you of what they have hurled against you. This kufr. What kufr? وَبِكُفْرِهِمْ Which kufr? وَبِكُفْرِهِمْ وَكَوْلِهِمْ عَلَى مَرْيَمَ بُخْطَانَ نَظِيمٌ As they hurl this lie, this slur against the theme of Maryam, that she committed sin and that he was a bastard child. That's kufr. And they said many other things against him, which constituted kufr. I'm going to cleanse you 
And so, as time proceeds, one of the timeline of events in Akhil Zaman is that eventually no one would dare to speak and say that she committed sin. That will be hurled into the garbage pit. They can do what they want. They dare not open the house to say she committed sin. They have to bite their teeth in frustration, but they cannot speak to say he's a bastard and that she committed sin. I'm going to cleanse you. And so the historical process will witness that no one will dare ever speak a word like that about Nabi Islam. This is part of the timeline of events in Afghan Saman from the Quran. How many are there today who dare to stand up and say, she committed sin? She committed sin. How many are there today who dare to stand up and say he's a bastard? No. They've been driven into silence. They gotta shut up. They can't speak a word because Allah says, but then he went on to say something else. And it missed me. <laughs> missed me while I recite in the Quran until my assistant who is sitting somewhere close by has pulled up. He drew my attention to it. When you get knowledge from someone, don't hide it. Don't pretend it's your knowledge. Give credit where credit is due. Don't take somebody else's knowledge and then present it as though it's yours. No, it is Hasbullah who directed my attention to this. And I'm going to raise those who follow you. Raise them above this group which rejected you. And when I raise your followers to that position of dominance, they will remain in that position of dominance until the end of the world. And so one of the most dramatic of all timelines in the Quran of Akhir Zaman is that a people who follow Nabi Isa Islam, and it is not for you and I to determine who they are. It is Allah who will decide who they are. And whoever has any differences with Allah and who objects to him, take your take, take your objections to him, see what he'll do with you. Did you hear that? It is he who will decide who are those who are following Nabi Isa Islam. And he will raise them to that position of dominance over this other group. And who is the other group? Who are those who rejected him as Al Masih? Allah says in the Quran, فَآمَنَ الطَّائِفَةُ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَكَفَرَ الطَّائِفَةُ Part of the Israelite people accepted him. He was sent to the Israelite people, Banu Israel. He was not sent to all of mankind. Nabi Isa is sent to the Israelite people, not to all of mankind. But Nabi Muhammad 
he is sent to all of mankind. So don't make a mistake between the two. فَآمَنَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّن بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Part of Banu Israel accepted him and had faith in him. وَكَفَرَ الطَّائِفَةٌ And another part rejected him, committed both. Those who rejected him are no longer called Banu Israel in the Qur'an. Allah chose a new name for them. The Qur'an now refers to them as Al-Yahud, the Jews. So the definition of a Jew in the Qur'an is someone who rejects Nabi Isa as Al-Masih. And those who accepted him are now called in the Qur'an Al-Nasara. Al-Nasara. Or the people who accept Al-Masih. The word Christ, Christ is a Greek word. They don't want to use the word Masih, so they substitute the Greek word Christ. And from Christ you get Christian. Hmm? So they're called Al-Nasara in the Qur'an. And Allah is pleased with this group. And Allah is displeased with this group. Since this group rejected him, they're still waiting for the Messiah to come. And so Allah sent the job <laughs> to deceive them. And that's why they now the Dajjal has liberated the Holy Land. He's brought them back to the Holy Land and they're now celebrating, but they don't know Allah. Dajjal is taking them for a ride. And it's the last ride on which they ever go. And Dajjal has caused a state of Israel to be restored in the Holy Land. And soon after the Great War, Israel will be a ruling state in the world. And so Pax Judaica will replace Pax Americana, the way Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica. And they will be celebrating the Messiah is coming, Messiah is coming. And then the Jah will appear in human form and he declares, I am Al Anal Masih. And all the deaf, the dumb, and the blind will accept him. The Messiah. This group made an alliance with part of this group because the Jal was released amongst the Christians. I made a mistake when I wrote Jerusalem in the Quran some 20 years ago. The mistake that I made. I'm happy when I make mistakes because I can correct myself. And those who want a sheikh who does not ever make mistakes, look for somebody else. <laughs> so I made a mistake when I wrote Jerusalem in the Quran. And I said that the Dajjal was released in the lifetime of Nabi Muhammad when he suspected a Jewish boy whose name was Ibn Sayyad to be the judge. The mistake I made was that no, the judge was released long before that. The evidence was there and this is my, my latest book called The Jal, the Quran and the Jasad. The Jal, the Quran and the Jasad and Constantinople in the Quran, these two books which are outside. That about 300 years before that, the Dajjal was released amongst the Christians. And he corrupted part of the Christian world. When he corrupted that part of the Christian world, then this, these Jews who rejected him, they made an alliance with that part of the Christian world. And so this world of Kufr, of Jewish Kufr, is now joined by another part of the Christian world. And they produce modern Western civilization. This is my lecture on Monday. You're invited to the International Islamic University at 3 o'clock. I think it's the, it's the Faculty of Engineering, perhaps. An Islamic 
eschatological explanation of modern Western civilization. So when Allah says that I'm going to raise those who follow you above this other group, he's talking about modern Western civilization. And there's going to be a Christian people who will become dominant over the West, over the Judeo-Christian alliance, which controls power in the West. That's the implication. Let me repeat it. That when Allah says, I'm going to cause those who follow you, <laughs> to be raised to a position of dominance over those who committed kufr against you. And when I raise these Christian people to that position of dominance, they will remain in that position of dominance in a yawmil qiyamah, until the end of the world. The amazing implication of this verse of the Qur'an is that there are a Christian people who would be recognized by Allah to be following Nabi Isa Not by you or by me, by him. He recognized them. And this, this Christian people will be raised to a position of, of dominance over NATO. Over NATO. Over the United States, Britain and France. <laughs> and when that occurs, then these Christian people will remain in that position of dominance until the end of the world. So you can now dismiss this nonsense that the Ummah of Muhammad wants to rule the world. We want to rule the world. The Quran doesn't support that. <laughs> no. The Quran does not support that. So who are these Christian people? Who will become dominant in the world in Akhirat Amen. This is Surah to Ali Imran. And uh, you will go back home and you study it. That's the way I was a student. We go now to the second, the timeline of events. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala devotes a surah of the Quran to the Christian world. Yes, it's called Surah to Rum. Rum. I Christian people. And Allah begins the surah with Alif Lam Mi, the way he began the Quran, Alif Lam Mi. So that should alert you. And then he went on to say, Holy but a room. Room has been defeated. So in order to identify Rome, we've got to find who are those who were defeated. Fiat al They were not defeated in Chicago. They were not defeated in France. <laughs> no. They were defeated in a land close by. Close by. Close by to Arabia. So who is Rome? But uh, despite their defeat, they would soon be victorious. How soon? In just a few years. We know who is Rome because the, the Mushrikeen in Mecca were celebrating when the Christian Byzantine Empire, Constantinople, was defeated by the Persian Empire because Makkah identified with Persia. 
And Mecca thought that Constantinople was similar to this new religion of Islam. And so Mecca was celebrating when that defeat of Constantinople took place. And when the Quran says that they will soon be victorious, then they started mocking us. What nonsense is your Quran talking about? Our people defeated your people. <laughs> so Abu Bakr Siddiq couldn't take it. You want a bet? They say, yeah, we take the bet. So they made a bet. <laughs> when the Prophet ﷺ heard about the bet between Abu Bakr Siddiq and the Mushrik, Mushrikun, he said Abu Bakr changed the bet. Change the bet. He said, Bida, Bida Sinin means between three and nine. So Allah is saying that the victory for Rome will come within three to nine years. So Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, he changed the bet to make it now between three and nine. And exactly as Allah spoke in the Quran, that is what happened at Abu Bakr Siddiq won the bet. So we know who is Rome. If you will excuse me once, the schoolboy can't come to tell me who is Rome. <laughs> you and I know who is Rome. Because Rome was victorious, Abu Bakr Siddiq won the bet. But then Allah went on. Yeah. Well, then Allah went on to say something more. He said there be two victories for Rome, not one, two. Min kabul, min ba'i. Min kabul, min ba'i. One victory will occur before. And the second victory will occur after. Before, when we think, we will ask, before what? And when the second victory should take place after, people who think would ask, after what? We will answer this question, inshallah, after the Salatul Isha. But then Allah goes on to say that on the occasion of both victories of Rome, before and after, for Yawma is in Yafrahul Mu'minun, that the followers of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we celebrated the first time that the Christians were victorious over Persia, we celebrated and the second time we will also celebrate. And so the timeline of events from the Quran is telling us as plain as daylight that Rome has a second victory coming. Let us start now for Salatul Isha and we'll continue inshallah after the Salat.